Thurgood Marshall symbolizes what is best about our American society, the belief that human rights must be satisfied through the orderly processes of law. For at the pinnacle of our system of the law is the great Supreme Court of the United States. And the Solicitor General is our first advocate before that great court. So it is a cause of profound satisfaction to me that in Judge Marshall we shall have an advocate whose lifelong concern has been the pursuit of justice for his fellow man. The only thing that I can say at this stage is that when I came into this room, I had the determination to do the best job that could be done in this position with as many hours of the day as I could stay awake. But after listening to our President and Mr. Justice Black, the only thing I can add to it is I'll just have to find some more hours and some more days to be able to live up to the faith that the two of them have and what has to be done for the country. Thank you very much, Mr. President.
Judge and Mrs. Marshall and two attractive young boys, Mr. Justice Black, Mr. Justice Clark, Distinguished Attorney General Katzenbach, Honorable J. Edgar Hoover, members of Congress, our distinguished guests and friends. Since assuming the presidency more than a year and a half ago, I have made a total of 370 major appointments to the federal government. In each of these appointments, it has been my goal and my determination to seek out the best qualified man or woman in the nation for the job regardless of their party, or their race, or their sex. That goal is fulfilled today as we meet here for the installation of uh, Justice Thurgood Marshall as the 33rd Solicitor General of the United States. And by this act, we pay honor to a high office in the American government to a man, and most of all, to the law. Any appearance of any kind? client will always be the United States of America. His interest does not always rest in trial. As Mr. Justice Sutherland once observed, the government's paramount interest is not that it shall win a case, but that justice shall be done. And that is the interest that we vest in the Solicitor General. In performing it, he serves not only the executive branch, but he serves the court itself. For traditionally, it has relied on him to set the standard for all the American bar in the country to follow. The position of Solicitor General is one of tremendous responsibility. And it is also that able scholar Archibald Cox, President Kennedy's Solicitor General, who said, the finest lawyer's position in all the world. And I want to say at this point that few men have served more forcefully or more successfully as Solicitor General of the United States than Archibald Cox. And as I noted when I accepted his resignation, Mr. Cox has argued more cases before the Supreme Court than any other living man. And he will hold that record at least until uh, Thurgood Marshall. Uh, <laughs> and he has uh, argued those cases with remarkable effectiveness. His return to private life has left a void that can only be filled by a great professional from among the highest ranks of the American bar. The life and the accomplishments of Thurgood Marshall 
testify that he is such a man as chief counsel to the National Association for the Advancement of the Colored People. He represented his clients, not as Negroes, whose cases were special and different, but he represented them as Americans with the same rights and the same responsibilities that the Constitution is supposed to give to every citizen. The cases in which uh, Judge Marshall became involved are already a part of the social and legal history of our time. From 1940 on, Thurgood Marshall was in the vanguard of the legal effort against discrimination in higher education, against discrimination in housing, against discrimination in voting. And then in 1954 came the climax toward which this good man had labored so brilliantly for so long. The Supreme Court school desegregation decision launched the great movement to end the injustice that's too often inflicted on our Negro citizens. And I've asked our cabinet to officer, Mr. Gardner, the HEW, to have his men work around the clock to make the desegregation decision of the Supreme Court a reality and a fact. And I'm glad that we are approaching it with such effectiveness. And I hope we'll complete the job between now and the time the school term opens. A decade later, some may have forgotten how much courage and how much work and how much faith in the nation that these efforts demanded. But I think all of us remember his vision and his unyielding pursuit of justice. In 1961, he was appointed by our late beloved President John Fitzgerald Kennedy to one of the nation's highest courts. And the past four years, he has written a distinguished record there. No one who knew this man expected it to be otherwise. No one who knew him thought that he would say no when a new and an even more compelling challenge was presented to him by his president. He accepted this assignment for one reason, because he knew that he was needed and because he has always responded when he has been needed. And I think it might be observed that Thurgood Marshall is the first Negro in the history of the United States ever to become its Solicitor General. Thurgood Marshall is already in the front ranks of the great lawyers of this generation. He has argued 32 cases before the Supreme Court. He has won 29 of them, and that's the batting average of 900. It is likely that should he continue in his present assignment for the next three years, that he could very well argue uh, 50 more cases before the highest court in the land, and that would make him try more cases before the Supreme Court than any man in history had ever presented to that body. But what is more relevant is that his nation has now progressed to the point, in large measure because of some of the things that he has done, that race really no longer serves as a bar to the exercise of experience or as a bar to the exercise of one's skill. And so with the gratitude for what he's done for all the people of America, and with confidence in his leadership to come. This morning, uh, we gather here in the cabinet room in the great capital of the United States, where we hope very shortly we will have home rule and select our own officials, <laughs> <laughs> to salute uh, Thurgood Marshall, the great American, the new Solicitor General of the United States of
Marshall, say aye. Aye.